since the 15th century, Greeks have been living under the denomination of Ottoman Turks, which created the growth of national aspirations and desire for independence. Alexander Ypsilanti, a Greek patriot and general in the Russian army and Greek nationalists in 1821, fought for freedom against the Ottoman Turks. At first, the great powers opposed all revolution, even against the Turks, while supporting the Ottoman Empire, but later, Britain, France, and Russia supported the nationalists. Americans and Europeans embraced the culture of classic Greece, while artists and writers were moved by the romantic impulse because of the Greek national struggle. For example, Lord Byron, an English romantic poet, even joined the Greeks to fight. In 1830, Greece eventually became independent. British aristocracy, which controlled the Tory party, feared liberalism and worked to repress it. Conflicts arose with the revision of 1815 Corn Laws because the war had ended grain importation and benefited everyone except the aristocracy. The aristocracy, because of this, rammed Parliament for a new regulation that prohibited to protect English landowners by stopping importation of foreign grain unless the price rose above a specific level. Corn laws prompted urban laborers to protest as the time of widespread unemployment and post-war economic distress was occurring. The government responded by, in 1819, establishing the Six Acts, placing controls on a heavily taxed press and practically eliminating all mass meetings. Following these acts were orderly protests leading to the Battle of Peterloo. With the middle class growing, pressure led to the Reform Bill of 1832 introduced by the Whig Ministry. It moved British politics in a democratic direction, allowing the House of Commerce to emerge as an all-important legislative body and eliminated rotten boroughs and their industrial areas gained representation. This increased the number of voters by about 50%. Cherish demanded universal male suffrage, which later failed as Parliament rejected all three petitions. Most of Ireland were Catholic peasants who rented land from greedy English Protestant landlords. Peasants lived in tragic poverty with tremendous population growth due to potato cultivation, early marriage, and high rents. In 1820, the potato crop was diseased and ended in the starvation of the population as it lessened. Relief efforts were insisted as they were adequate, as landlords insisted on rent and government's taxes, leading to mass evictions. Because of this, millions died or left Ireland, while anti-British feeling and Irish nationalism followed. Louis XVIII's Constitutional Charter of 1814 was a liberal constitution. Economic and social gains made by middle class and peasantry in the French Revolution were protected. Louis XVIII dies in 1824. Charles X, Louis' successor, could not abide, and he wanted to reestablish an old order in France, making Charles' government turn to military adventure in an effort to rally French nationalism and gain support through a war with Algeria. Charles was encouraged by that news and attempted to coup issuing decrees that stripped the wealthy's suffrage, causing printers and artisans and small traders to revolt. The government collapsed in three days. Then Louis Philippe took the throne, and in his run, there was only charge and dynasty in order to protect states and liberal institutions.